crave the sun A void within us seeks the one Grace is for the living It's easier to breathe in love There's a path that leads through pain There's a freedom that It's all a prayer away, this gift of love that won't fade away. Here's a There's a path that leads through pain There's a freedom that awaits And it's all a prayer away This gift of love that won't fade away Is available every day through faith Good morning. How is everybody this morning? Thanks, man. Yelling at me. I appreciate it. We are glad that you're here this morning. It's almost hard to be in here this morning, isn't it? I mean, when you get a day like this, you kind of want to be outside. I, they, they don't happen like this in July too much, I don't think. You want to... Uh, just get out and enjoy that 70 degree stuff. But I, we do want to take an opportunity to say thank you for coming. Thank you for taking an opportunity to come into this place. Uh, it is such a privilege to come into the house of the Lord. And uh, uh, we just ask that he might prepare our hearts, our minds as we enter this worship time. Uh, take opportunity to uh, just praise, worship, give back. Uh, but also just uh, realize how awesome a God he, he truly is. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, right now we just come to you in prayer, praising your name and thanking you for who you are. Dear Heavenly Father, we know that your holiness lights up our entire life. And Father, that each person in this place comes up wanting. But Father, when our eyes are opened and our ears hear, we know that you want us in this place. You, we, you want us in your presence. And you want us to see and hear. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray for these, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that, Lord, we might all hear a word from you today, that you might wrap your loving arms around us, that we might understand, perceive, and know your truth. Father, thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please take an opportunity and greet each other.
Good morning. How are y'all doing today? Good. Okay. You guys sure that you're good? You got two. You've got one and you've got one. Well, this will be interesting. Um, well, if you haven't been here this month, we're doing Sermon in a Sack, so looks like we're doing two sermons in a sack. Um, but what this is, is the kids take home a sack, and then they bring something, um, and I talk about how it relates to God. So, and if the kids forget to bring their sack, and then they scramble and get one, then we end up with two. So that's what happened today. So, um, I don't know, what do you guys think is in the sack? A radio, a phone, hey, look at that, there's a phone in that bag, and we're going to send every kid home with a cell phone today, not really, so, all right, well this, in this bag number one, we have a cell phone, and so, we got more kids, you didn't bring a bag, did you, that's good, so. All right, well, how do you guys think a phone could relate to God? A Bible in it. Oh, you could text him, yeah. Have you guys ever texted God or Jesus? Me neither. I don't. But what we could do is you could talk to God. You guys ever talk to God? I just got a text message, but it's not from God. Um, anyway, God, prayer is talking to God, right? You guys agree with that? Yeah? So do you guys ever pray? Okay. Are you guys awake? First hour was awake a lot more than this. So, okay, well, what I want you to do is this week when you see a cell phone, I want you to remember that, hey, I can talk to God, and it's just like picking up a cell phone and saying, hey, God, how many of you guys just pretend to talk on a cell phone at some point in your life? Maybe not this year because you're cool now, but have you ever talked on a cell phone before? Like talked it into a piece of wood? No. Okay. Well, it's just me. Well, next time you see a phone, just remember that you can talk to God, okay? All right. We're going to do this because this is what it's about. We're going to see what's in the second. Oh, I ripped it. Oh my. Did you get this out of your mom's purse? Is there money in it? I don't even, I, I think it's a lipstick case. Is that what that is? Man, but it's empty. So how could this relate to God? Well, um... You could lock your heart into God. I like it. Yeah. Well, how many of you guys have in invited Jesus to come live inside your hearts? Have you all, any of you done that? Are any of you awake? No? Okay. Well, this is kind of like your heart because it's red inside. Um, and it has leopard skin on the outside. I don't know how that's like your heart. But it's kind of not like your heart. But anyway... Um, when we invite Jesus to come live inside our lives and give our lives to God, then he unlocks our heart. We have to unlock our heart. We have to invite him in. He's not just going to break into our little heart. He's, but if we open it, then he'll come inside and he'll live there in our lives, okay? So remember that next time you see a lipstick thing, if you guys ever see a lipstick thing again. Um, and remember that you can talk to God, okay? Let's pray. God, thank you for today, and thank you for the opportunity to just learn about you through objects. Thank you that we can come to you and just pray, and thank you that we have a heart, um, and we can invite you into our heart, and you'll come there. We thank you, and we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, this month is over, and Sermon in the Sack is kind of over because Casey will be back next week. But do you guys think we should continue Sermon in the Sack and, like, get something really good for Casey next week? What do you guys think? Yeah. 
So who's coming to church next week? You going to be here? You've done it? You're going to be there? You've done it too. Why don't we give it to one of the castle boys? You won't be here. Okay, here you go. All right, make sure it's something really good to stump Casey with, okay? As the kids return to their seats, if you would stand, we invite you to sing with us this morning. And recognizing who God is and how much he loves us because he's shown us through what he's done for us.
before the throne of God above. I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love, whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hands. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me thence depart. No tongue can bid me thence depart. When Satan tempts me to despair and tells me of the guilt within, upwards I look and see him there, who made an end of all my sin. Because a sinless Savior died, my sinful soul is counted free.
Thank you, Jesus, that you um, came and you suffered our consequence. That way we can stand here today and we can say that because you live, we can face tomorrow. You may be seated. Thanks, man. You got to stay up here. I first of all immediately ask forgiveness for all the lies that I told in the first service because I uh, was trying to share where David and Carly are going and I messed it all up. So I, I'm not even going to try this time, but I will tell the important parts, okay? Okay. This is the important part. David and Carly have blessed us, have they not? Have you enjoyed the music and their shelling of their talents with us? I know it's meant a lot to me, and we want to thank you for that. But it's also important to realize that they are going on to a different phase in their life. They're, they're, they're going on to, to continue education, to continue schooling. Uh, I, I know some of that is scary. Um, I, I know... Man, some of the coolest thing in the world is to go someplace as a couple together and be able to grow together. Uh, 
And some of that's going to be hard, and some of you know that. Uh, some of it's going to be blessings that are, that are untold at this particular point. And God will use you, but I want you also to know that you've been used here. This is David Carley's last week uh, leading music for us. I think uh, Casey will probably jump on you next week, too, as you'll be here. That's your last week, correct? But I just wanted to say thank you for your service. We also wanted to just uh, pass this along to y'all. It's just a card from the church. And I'd ask that you please let us pray for you uh, as we go. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for David and Carly. We thank you for the blessing that they've been in our lives. Father, we just ask that you protect them as they travel. We ask that you protect them, Lord, as they go to serve you in a different place. Father, we ask that you might bind them together. We ask that you might let to teach them things now that they will need to know in their future as they continue to serve. Protect them. Lord, we just ask that uh, you be with them. Lord, we just thank you again for the blessing they've been to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. All right, I'm also going to ask just real quick, it's going to be a morning of thanks is what, is, is what it's going to be, but I'm going to ask if Nate would come up. Uh, we're also sending a mission team out this week to Trash Mountain, and we just want to kind of let you see some of the faces. We had some in the early service. I'm hoping that we've got some here. If not, it's going to be me and Nate, and I will pray for Nate, and we all know Nate needs lots of prayer, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <Nate. laughs> you got anybody? Okay. Shirley, come on up. Come on down. She's been running to me in the halls all day, trying to push me down and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Am I on? I'm on. All right. <clears throat> we are going to Trash Mountain. We have nine people from the church going. We've got Regina and Randy and Megan Lilly, Shirley Martin, um, Carol and Kelsey Roberts, and... Uh, Randy and Cheryl Gregg, is that it? And me. So, right. um, we wanted to thank you guys because we, this wouldn't have been possible without you all. We've done a lot of fundraisers, and a lot of that's been funded by you guys, and so we appreciate. And this is kind of a culmination of what's happened in the last year. Last year, I went with Trash Mountain to on a discovery trip, and then now we've got nine people from the church going. So it's been pretty amazing just to see how people have answered the call and. We're all excited about going and what God's going to do this week. So, Thanks, Nate. And I just ask this. Remember that they're going tomorrow, early tomorrow morning. And we would just ask that uh, during your week, don't forget about them. They're on point for this church. They're going out in mission, but they're a part of our body. We need to be praying for their protection. We need to be praying that God might open their eyes, their hearts, their minds, their mouths, that they might see the truth and be able to share that truth as they go out as part of our body. But please pray for them this week. Let's just lift them up right now. Dear Heavenly Father, right now we just come to you in prayer. We just ask that, Lord, you might offer protection to this group uh, that goes to the Trash Mountain Project. Father, we just ask that you might use them mightily. Lord, that you might use them in the lives of others. But, Father, we know on a trip like this, your life never you never come back unchanged. Father, we just ask that you might bring them back with a fire, zest, Lord, and a willingness to share with us how they saw God move. Lord, we already pray and give thanks for what you're going to accomplish in lives next week. Thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And thank you all. and Have a good week. We appreciate that. I also want to say, I told you it was going to be a morning of Thanksgiving. I also want to take an opportunity to say thanks uh, just to everybody that's kind of been involved in the, in the last month. You know, I, this, I have a philosophy. Uh, in being involved in leadership is that you always know that your leadership is successful somewhat. This is one way to measure it is when you're not present, the things that need to happen still happen. That, that's a positive sign in leadership. And I just want to say thank you. I, I know it's not Casey in the pulpit, uh, but I do want to say thank you that he trusts us enough that he might uh, take a few minutes and, and, and revitalize his vision, his, his, just his batteries and just life with his family. But I want to say thank you to Tom for just challenging us to live in margins in our lives. 
and that message that he shared with us about how important it is to leave room for God to share uh, what he wants to share with us in our lives. I want to say thank you to Kevin that he, that he shared uh, uh, living that, um, that action figure faith and that we have and that he wants us to be superheroes. That, that's what he calls us to be. I want to say thank you to Dwayne for reminding us that we are sons. We are his sons. That he calls us, even though we are undeserving and he knows our weaknesses and our strengths, that we are his sons. I want to thank Chase, even though he's not here, that mission team has gone on as well too. But taking that time of reminding us out of Romans chapter 3 that we serve a God of grace. That even though we're sinful, even though we're filthy as rags, he loves us. He loves us and places a grace on our life that's hard for us to understand. I want to say thank you to the staff. Kevin, I know he's been busy over the last couple of weeks with mission trip and super summer and out flying around the world with the youth. Nate, sermon on the sack. You changed my whole sermon. I'll explain that and a reason why because I'm going to use what happened up here uh, in just a few minutes. I think Annette and, and Nancy just for, for them holding the office together. Y'all, I want to thank you for praying for our pastor. I want to thank you for spending the time this month to be on your knees in prayer for him and the visioning that God's given him. Again, the refreshing of his batteries, that he comes back here and we might be excited about what God's laid on his heart and that we might be willing to place ourselves under his authority and move forward in the way that God would have us to. It's been, a, it's been an interesting month, I know. But next week we get Casey back. Next week, we get him to re-come into the pulpit, and it's going to be a time of celebration. I know you're glad for that. You're just going, yeah, we wish it was this week. <laughs> hey, I'm going to ask you to participate with me in the service this morning. It's not that you don't always participate. Man, we do. If you, if you want to know what worship services have actually been about, it's, it, we're, worship services are, are built so that we might come and participate in a body, a multitude of things that God has actually done for us. We get to sing our praise through music. We get to give back what he's blessed us with through our tithes and offerings. We get to celebrate friendship. We get to celebrate the fellowship of other believers and brothers and sisters in Christ. We get to hear a word from a holy God through his Bible. Man, it's easy to get excited about what God actually calls worship and when we come together corporately, what that means. But you know, we, we serve a God that wants to meet with us as individuals. And after he's met with us as an individual, he wants us to be able to meet together as a body. And then he wants us to impact a world. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to turn to Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. And we're going to look at a really familiar passage this morning. And it's uh, uh, the, so, the, the sower of seed. And, and we're going to do it a little bit different. You'll understand. I just want to give you a little bit that by asking you to participate, I'm not going to ask you to come up and sing solos and talk and all that stuff. But I, I do want you to prepare your heart to, to be in the presence of a holy God. I want to be in the presence of a, of a holy God. As we look at Matthew chapter 13, this is what I'm stealing from Nate, is, this, is the fact, um, this is probably one of the busiest days in Jesus' ministry. Matthew chapter, chapter 13, because he makes a major transition here. What's neat is if you actually look in chapter 12, he's preaching all morning. He's preaching all morning in the house. And what that actually represents is he's actually preaching all in the morning to the Jewish people. All right? And he actually makes a, a, a significant move out to where he moves from the house onto the shoreline where he actually, and great crowds gather around him. And when you actually look at it, this is where he really takes the message to the whole world. He's going, okay, we, we, we've... I brought it to Jew first. I brought it to God's people first. But now it's time to move it to the whole world because the message is to the whole world. 
So that's what I'm stealing from you, Nate. He's preached two sermons that day, long ones. <laughs> two really long sermons that day. He had two sermons in a sack, and he had a sermon in each sack specifically designed for a specific group of people. Uh, and, and I think that's why it's, it's, it's so neat to, to look at this transition. Y'all, I told you the parable of the sower. I do think the parable of the sower is important, and we're going to look at it for a few minutes at the, at the end of the service. But what I want to tell you is I think what's more important is what happens in between the, the, the telling of the parable of the sower, what he actually tells the disciples before he actually gives the interpretation. He only actually interprets two different, and partially a third, but two different parables that he actually gives. And I think there's a reason for that. I think the reason that he actually interprets the parables only a couple of times is he wants us to get it enough that we are in his presence and go, okay, we want to come into your presence and you are going to help me interpret these parables of life. Right? He gives us some clues on how to interpret, but the rest of it comes through the relationship. And I think that happens in verse 10. Uh, and, and I'm going to I'll point it out when we actually get there because I think it's important what the, what the disciples actually ask him. But let's uh, just read through uh, verse 16 as our practice. If you stand in, the, in just the honor of reading God's word, ask that he give us eyes to hear or eyes to see. I knew I was going to do that. Eyes to see and ears to hear his word and his truth to us. Matthew chapter 13, beginning verse 1. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on the good soil, where it produced a crop. A hundred, sixty, thirty times was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. Pay attention to verse 10. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Why do you speak to the people in parables? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, right now we just want to say thank you, Lord, that you love us, that you want to give us eyes to see, that you want to give us ears to hear. Father, I'm unworthy to be in your presence. Father, I know that there's no one in this place that's worthy to be in your presence. It's but one reason that we can come into your presence. And that's because of the blood that you shed for us, Jesus. That's the great mystery. You saved us even though we were wretched. And Father, you promise that you'll give us eyes to see and ears to hear and that you'll use us in this life. Father, to serve you, to worship you, to be involved in the lives of others, and to ultimately spend eternity with you. Father, as we look at this message on eyes to see and ears to hear, we just ask that you might let us see your word afresh and let your Holy Spirit touch those that are in this place, including me, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can be seated. I just want to tell you, we make fun of the disciples a lot. I mean, and they're easy to make fun of because they make us, but I, all of us are easy to make fun of when it really comes right down to it. We are. We're messed up. You know, but I want to say, it'd be easy to look at the disciples and come and actually look at what they're actually asking Jesus is, hey, why are you teaching them in parables almost like it's a scolding? But I don't think that's what's happening here. I think what they're actually saying is, why are you teaching them in parables? Because they aren't getting it. They aren't getting it. We need it. Here's the other way to look at it. They knew exactly who to go to to get the answer to the parables. All right? 
They heard the parable. They know they've got no problem. They know they already have a relationship with the master. They know that he's given the parable. They've already been in some training where they actually understand, okay, this is what I think he's trying to say, but if I do have a question, because of the relationship, I can actually go right to him and say, Jesus, I don't understand this part. Help me understand. But already their starts are starting to change if you actually look at it. They care about the people that are actually listening to the parables that Jesus is teaching. Right? But what happens right after that is he actually goes into and actually quotes directly Isaiah chapter 6, which I think is such a critical... Man, it's an incredible pa passage, and I, and I think it, it, it's important to, to catch that what he's doing with the people of the world and what he was doing with those of Isaiah's day, and it's going to be familiar to you too, that, man, he really does want us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. But he also understands that everybody won't hear. And he understands that everybody won't see. Isaiah chapter 6, and I'll read it in just a minute. Isaiah chapter 6, Hezekiah has just died. No, it's not Hezekiah. Help me. I lied. Is it Hezekiah? Thank you. Yeah, I don't know where I pulled that out of. Anyway, King Uzziah has died. Did I say it right that time? I should probably read it. He, this is why Isaiah is actually seeking the face of a holy God, because he's been king for 52 years. Now, I want you to think about it. We're not used to that in this country, but he's actually been king for 52 years. Now, there's one thing that happens when anybody is in charge of anything for 52 years. You get comfortable on the decisions, how that person's going to make decisions, right? There's probably very few surprises about what's going on while he's king. He also was a pretty decent king. He made mistakes, but ultimately, he cared about the people. And he cared about the worship of a holy God. But I'm going to tell you something. He and the people at that particular time got comfortable. Is it easy to get comfortable? 52 years, same thing, not having to change a whole lot. We know what the truth is. We are the people, that sort of, you know, we got it going on. He's going to protect us. Where it, life is, not, that's what it is, right? So this nation's, they're freaking out. They're freaking out because he's dying and they don't know what's actually coming next. So you, Isaiah decides that it's time to get before a holy God. Get before a holy God. And I think that's what's critical. And I think that's, he hits that in Matthew chapter 13. He's explaining this to the disciples. But I think it's also important to look at what was actually happening at that particular time when it was happening in Isaiah as well. Listen to what Jesus said explanation that he gave when the disciples asked why do you speak them in, in parables it says this the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you but not to them who has whoever has will be given more and he will have an abundance whoever does not have even he will be have it taken from him this is why i speak to them in parables y'all and this is what i think is so important though seeing they do not see Though hearing they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing but never understanding. You will be ever seeing but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts and what? And turn and I would heal them. I would heal them. I'm going to ask Justin to come up and he's going to just play some music for us. And this is how I want you to participate with me this morning. And I tell you, it is a participation because I find myself in the same place that you're at. I find myself wanting in the presence of a holy God. You know what? I think we're really good at something in a Baptist church and I could probably be better at it than I wanted to be. I can get right up here and clobber you over your heads with sin. It's real easy to do. If you want me to get up here and talk about how guilty you should be, and maybe some way that, you know, but here's the fact of the matter. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. What Isaiah is pointing out to us is that when 
He entered the presence of a holy God. The holiness of God, his righteousness, shined in every corner of Isaiah's life. There is nothing hidden. I don't know about you, but there's certain things in my life I don't want you to know. There's certain things I've dealt with or even maybe I've been forgiven of that I don't want you to have to look at. There's certain things about my character that I don't like and I don't understand. But here's the incredible thing. Isaiah learned how to start low and end high. Start low and end high. What he realized is he didn't have to think about what happened when he got into the presence of a holy God. He went face first because everything was shown. He had eyes to see. He had ears to hear. And what he knew was he was unworthy to be in the presence of a holy, righteous God. After that, though, we find that God lifted him up and he opened his eyes to see and he opened his ears to hear it's in chapter 7 of Isaiah that he actually gives the promise of the virgin birth and the coming of the Messiah y'all this is what I want this morning I don't want you to worry about those that are around you I don't worry about whether you're better than me or I'm better than you while Justin plays this is what I'm going to ask I think it's become difficult for us to be quiet in church. I think somebody has to be singing something, saying something, or doing something all the time. When all God really wants is just just get quiet before him for a few minutes. So that's what I'm going to ask. Our God is holy. Our God wants to know you. Our God wants you to have eyes to see and ears to hear. But that means just spending a few minutes in, in quiet before him and letting him deal with you in a very specific way. So will you ask him to give you eyes to see and ears to hear? Let's pray. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on the rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution come because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word 
But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Dear Heavenly Father, right now we just ask that as we enter this time, Father, of just worship to you that you might give us eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you for loving us even when we're blind. We thank you for loving us even when we can't hear. Father, we thank you for loving us in our, suffer- our suffering, our, our, our stubbornness. Father, we thank you for the perfect gift of your Son. We thank you for your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks, Justin. You know, if you really study this parable, there's several ways to look at it. Lot actually say that what it actually is, is, is looking at is, is an individual life. That as we walk as individuals, that, is so, that seed is actually sown. That we are so blind that we don't even see the seed right in front of us. You know, there's others that say that it's talking about the church. You know, that it's talking about those of us that actually sit in this place on Sunday morning and we hear truth and we get so excited about that truth that we amen and that we shake our heads and then the very instant we leave, we forgot what was spoken about. It's also said that it could be the world. You know, I think my biggest fear is, is I don't want to wake up one day and realize that I'm hanging out with weeds. <laughs> you know? But I realize that, man, I've been given a great gift. And I realize that the plan is growing. I realize that I've been given a hunger for the Word. But am I really developing the fruit that God wants me to develop? Or am I so worried about the worries of this world? About my retirement? About whether my kids are okay? About whether I paid enough of their education? About whether I take care? That I forget the very message. That gospel message of who Jesus is and what he's actually done for me. You know, in the, in the words of the great prophet Mark Lowry, if you know, thank you. He did say something that challenged me, though. He said this, You know, how about you hate your sin? I'll hate my sin, and we love each other. We're sinful, y'all, but we serve a God that wants us to have eyes to see and ears to hear. We ought to look at it. If you actually read that parable, three out of four seeds die. Three out of four don't make it. Three out of four never understand. Three out of four are continually blinded till their death. We ought to be praying that God open the eyes. Not just ours, but man, once we have a relationship, the eyes that are those around us too. I think we work way too hard at the natural sometime. I, don't, I want to... I want to be willingly taught and not willingly ignorant. That's where the world's at. The world doesn't want to hear this message anymore. Or the world thinks they have heard the message, but they just want to do what they want to do. Which is kind of weird because we do that in church. We've heard the message. We like talking about that we know the message, but we really ain't living the message. You see the key? The parable's cool. The parable is important. But what's really important is that we realize that the Holy Spirit, through our relationship with Jesus Christ, gives us eyes to see and ears to hear. So as we get ready to dismiss this morning, this is what I would ask you. Do you truly have eyes to see and ears to hear? Because here's the message. It's already been spoken When we talk about our lives, any of us, we come up wanting. I'm sinful. If you were up here, you, 
I have no doubt that you are too. But our God doesn't want to leave us in that state. You see, He sent His Son. He sent His Son that He might be atonement for our sin. This is the gospel message. This is what He wants us to see. Jesus allowed Himself to be placed on a cross that His blood might be shed. He took on the sin that I deserve to die for and died in my place. And the life that I live now, I want to live with the eyes that see and the ears that hear what He's given me. He didn't leave me in the gutter. He reached out a hand and he grabbed me and he said, I know you're sinful, but I've taken care of it. And he lifted me up and he uses me even though I'm unworthy. And brother and sister, he can use you too. He wants you to have eyes to see and ears to hear. Every day he wants us to see more and hear more and perceive more and understand more but it's all about coming into His presence. Coming into His presence. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, right now, the seed has been strewn. Your gospel message has been spoken. Father, we're going to go from this place tomorrow. They're going to Trash Mountain t t tomorrow. Father, th th we're, we're sending people out and about uh, to, to different places to learn. We're all going to different places. Father, we ask that you might use us to be the sower and that we might pray that others might have eyes to see and ears to hear. But Father, during this time, this morning, we just ask that you open our eyes and our ears to the truth of your gospel. Because if we don't enter your presence, we are the blind leading the blind and those that can't hear trying to get someone else to hear. Thank you for your love. Father, you give eyes to see and ears to hear what needs to be done this morning. If somebody needs to come and say, I want to start that relationship, let it be done. Father, if there needs a relationship that needs to be reconciled between individuals, Father, if maybe we just need to spend a little more time in your presence, let that happen at this time. Make fruit of this time that you've given us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. the time in our service where we've come to give back to you. Father, just ask that uh, what we give back and, uh, can be used to help glorify everything that you want to, uh, to glorify. In your son's name. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is 
through. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Just stand and join us. I am found. I am yours. I am love. I'm made pure. I have life. I can breathe. I am healed. I am free. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Because I am found. I am yours. I am loved. I made pure. I have life. I can breathe. I am healed. I am free. Because you are strong. You are sure. You are life. You endure. You are good. Always true. Announcements, announcements, announcements. You guys ready? Hey, this Thursday evening, we are having a square dance right here. So you need to be here. I'm, I'll be in the DR. I would be here. So anybody, uh, they will have a professional caller will be here. It's our last family night. It's not on Wednesday. It's on Thursday. Starts at 630. Bring cookies. They'll have ice cream, and you can uh, get your dance on. Also, this Thursday at uh, 10 a.m., 10 to 12.30, is Life Fest. It is seniors ministering to seniors. It's open to everyone. I've been to it. They have some pretty good food there, good desserts. So if you're available this Thursday morning, they have a lady named Laura Jones who's coming from Liberal to talk about how she lost her husband and children in a wreck. It's a very inspiring story. So if you can make it, please come to that. And there is a marriage seminar going on this Saturday here at the church. If you're interested in that, please see Annette in the office. Also, www. It's a wonderful weekend for women or um, guys hang out at home with the kids weekend. Anyway, it's coming up uh, September 13th and 14th. If you're interested in that, please see Shauna Wood or Winter Ball. Thank you. Y'all have a wonderful week.